Hi everybody, so today's video I made about ferrite clamps because I think there is quite some interest in how ferrite clamp works and I have seen after the last presentation about uh, the instant best friends forever some people gave me good feedback about the fer ferrite clamps and additionally what I saw like two days ago was an animation from one of the big EDA vendors showing a ferrite clamp and that, that it basically stopping a noise signal and letting the the actual signal through and there was like an animation with a policeman standing there and stopping the stopping the noise signal which is uh, maybe nice for the sesame street but that's not what physically is happening so obviously the clamp is not magically stopping you noise it has a very clear way how to what hap what happening on the physical side and that's what i would like to demonstrate today for it to you so what i made is a very simple setup we have a metallic ground plane and basically a wire of two meter lengths and the wire is fed through the center so this will be my feeding point so i basically have two uh, interconnected sections for one meter to the left one meter to the right and i just short this to end so let the current flow and we will see how the currents look like after adding a clamp so this is the setup the 3d model we, we don't need that much it, it calculated through we will use it later on and i have a voltage source over here so it drives a one volt with an inner impedance of one ohm which gives me one amp of current uh, note that it's required to use a voltage source if you use a current source you will not have like two loops because a current source would be an open you will only have one loop left so it has to be a voltage source and what we have basically two loops one to the left one to the right and a short them with one milliohm the actual values are not that much important it's important to look at how the current behaves so if we feed it here with the 1m if we look obviously the whole setup is, is pretty symmetric i mean this is just some artifacts due to due to uh, low accuracy of the simulation but we don't require a high accuracy to compare this result so at, at the lower frequencies it's like half half amp going to the left and half amp going to the right and once the impedance of the wire is becoming significant it's becoming larger than the source impedance we see kind of that kind of drop off so when the impedance of each of the arm is larger than the one ohm which i use for the source it rolls off but then at higher frequencies we are getting some kind of resonant effects which you see that's uh, 120 and three, uh, 250 megahertz so up to here everything has been symmetric as expected so let's move on and go to the model with a clamp so up place a clamp on the on the one arm on the right hand side it's something like five centimeters long and one centimeter of thickness and it's using um, a ferrite material so i'm using a dispersive model for the ferrite which is rather aiming let's say at higher frequencies that uh, we still have some mu mu prime even at 100 megahertz mu prime is something like 70 uh, 200 it's still something like 20 that's again the, the actual values are not that important we just need to make sure that uh, the ferrite is also having some that we seeing some um, some permeability also at the higher frequencies that's that's what I've set up and now let's take a look at the schematic it's the same setup I drive again the one amp we have the left and the right hand side and we look at the currents that's how they look like and now it's important to explain why it will look like this. So as long as it's completely dominated by the resistance, I think the clamp doesn't change anything because the, the impedance is dominated by the resistance. At a certain frequency then, we can see that the two curves separate. I have a much lower current on the right-hand side, while on the other hand, on the left-hand side, the current has increased. I mean it's clear what i do is by adding the clamp i'm increasing the impedance by adding a, a imaginary component i'm adding an inductance so the current itself uh, the higher the frequency gets the current will um, the current will just separate differently it will flow to the it will it will still remain as a sum it's still one m but most of the current now flows in the left hand arm and less on the right hand arm because the impedance on the right hand side 
is different than on the left hand side and that is exactly what is happening when you put a clamp around the wire what you do is you are not absorbing the signal it's not going away you are increasing the common mode impedance and by doing so you force the current to take another path and in many cases you will not know what other path it takes in a complex in a complex product uh, but at, as long as you keep it away from the cables right you can reduce your radiated emission because the cables are long and they create radiation but you did not remove it you just make it move another way in our simple example it's very straightforward it just moves to the left hand side so that's what's happening and i mean you can see also this this border here exactly like when we look at the impedances we can look at the impedance uh, you can see that um, as long as it's dominated so this is the impedance plot for the left hand and for the right hand side as long as it's dominated here by the resistance but the real part of the impedance it doesn't make a change it's still half half and then because of adding the adding the clamp we have increased the impedance uh, we have increased the, the imaginary part of the impedance you can see it shifts from here to here and once the imaginary part of on the right hand side is becoming larger than the real part on the right hand side this is where the currents start to start to spread differently or the ratios of the current on the left and the right hand side try to change so that's pretty straightforward i think many emc experts are of course aware of this but as i have said in the beginning not everybody and maybe it's a good lesson for PCB designers to understand how the clamp actually works but I don't want to stop here because there is something pretty interesting if we look at the higher frequencies so what you can see is that in this particular peak it's not damped so the right hand current and the left hand current is pretty similar obviously it's a little bit left uh, the left hand side is still a little bit uh, higher than the right hand side but the right hand side has a significant current here while at this peak it does not and why is this happening and the answer we can find obviously in the fields so when i speak i speak mostly about the fields so if we look at the clamp i have placed it in the center and if we look at the magnetic field at 122 megahertz this is the peak where we didn't see much of the influence of the clamp on the right hand side i want to show you the magnetic field it becomes pretty clear obviously we have to look at the magnetic field the clamp is made from permeable material and the permeable material uh, interacts with the magnetic field and by seeing this picture i mean it's a little bit ugly like i said it's a very low resolution used here but it still gives you the idea when I'm putting the clamp in the center at 122 uh, megahertz this is exactly the and of this is exactly the the null of the mode so i'm placing the clamp in a position where there is no magnetic field and that's why it does not interact and it also does not block or it does not reduce the current it's very different than 250 where you can see now we have to look at this side because here is the clamp at 250 the in in the center of the of the wire that's the uh, that's the peak of the mode so putting it here in the peak of the of the field this is where the clamp is the most effective this is why the clamp is working at 250 but it's not working at 122 as we can see here so what can you do obviously you can shift the clamp shift the clamp to a closer position and once you do this again the same type of evaluation if we look at the left and right currents you can see that the peak at 122 megahertz has been also now damped the current in the peak is is much lower than it was before simply because i have placed the clamp in the maximum of the magnetic field of this of this particular resonance and this also the reason why they typically tell you to put the clamp as close as possible to the uh, to the connector because if you think about fields if we have a low impedance at this uh, let's let's consider the right hand arm and we have a low impedance here and here then the magnetic field will have the peaks uh, let me maybe go to this plot where we don't have um, 
but we don't have the clamp when we look at the modes um, just just on the wire. So the magnetic field, because this is a um, which is the right thing here. Because this is a low impedance here and a low impedance there, this leads to the fact that the magnetic field will always have the maximum at the ends and the electric field will be low at the ends. So as long as you can assume that your source uh, is, is a rather a low impedance source, then putting the clamp close to the source is the best because then you will guarantee hit a hit a maximum of the magnetic field. If you have some more complex behavior, if you have different source impedances of your common mode source, obviously you have to know what is the impedance of your common mode source, but if you have a different behavior or if you have different field distribution along the clamp, uh, along the wire, then it will always be the best to put the clamp at the position where you have the maximum magnetic field because then it will efficiently increase the inductance the most because the clamp material interacts with the magnetic field. I think it's not that complicated and pretty simple stuff, but I, I hope still you found it quite useful. And thank you for watching. I'll up to the next time. Bye bye.